This is the Night Show with Ryan Roberts. Right on time as usual, Jim. <laughs> wow. That was awful. Thousands, if not millions, of technical difficulties happening right before the show. Two minutes before. Two minutes before the show. Perfect. Technology failed me once again. My guest this evening, the amazing Eddie Money. We, uh, we'll be talking with him. He's got a new reality TV show coming out called Real Money on Axis TV. It starts this Sunday, premieres this Sunday at uh, 9.30. And it's all about the life of Eddie Money, hanging out at Eddie Money's house with his seven dogs and five kids and wife. His kids play in a band with him. His kids play in their own band, so uh, that's what he's doing these days. And he's got a brand new single that has yet to be released that we're going to be playing uh, this evening as well. So lots to look forward to. With me as always, my illustrious producer, Jim Lauber III. How are we doing, Jim? Doing good. Good. He, he was so pleasant to interview, too. Really? He really was. Oh, we were going to pretend it was live, but, uh, but now that you the cat's no, I know out when of I talked to him. No, when I talked to him out of the, on the phone. Oh, okay. Okay, now you, you ruined it. You, you ruined it. <laughs> you, you're a ruiner of everything. Anyway, Liz Rotolo's here. <laughs> Anthony Elysio's here. Eric LaRusso's here. Paul Chris is here. Pete Steinger's here. Cop Kelly's here. Hey, Cop Kelly. And um, I don't have any gives, but April Foolishness, April 14th, the Space Ballroom in Hamden. Tickets are 12 bucks. Go to WPLR.com. The space, if you've never been down, it's a pretty anyway, new venue. They used to have, um, it was the outer space, and they moved. Uh, it's a new owner's, new venue, and it's really, really cool. There's multiple rooms, a nice little stage. So that's where we're going to be doing April Foolishness. The tickets are still on sale, like Jim said. You just got to head to WPLR.com. I'm going to be there. Sideshow Benny is coming in all the way from Tennessee. And uh, he's going to be doing, last night, he stapled a dollar bill to his head. He also uh, lies on a bed of barbed wire, I believe. He can play dart boards on his back. He's got a, uh, a tattoo on his shoulder of a dart board, and he has a dart board tournament during his show. And uh, there's prizes afterwards. And his brajol is pierced. That's right. His brajol. That's right. Unlike... Uh, Unlike you, you have shrapnel. Right. He, he did it on purpose. He did it on purpose. Which I don't, I would never, I would never do that, I don't think. I really, I, I like the things that have holes. Um, that's fine. We'll just leave those there. Oh, yeah. And the things that don't have holes, we'll just leave that, that there, too. You know, I, I'm not, uh. Like you, I'm not you into. Um, he did it on purpose. I, I did have an earring once. I, I, I had earrings it's too. It's true. I did in my have, band playing days. Yeah, I had an earring at one time. Um, Jamie hears an echo. She says, "I think I fixed it." Thank you, Jamie. Facebook user says that guy with the stapler is cool. That's a weird Facebook name. Facebook user. Yes. A user of Facebook. A user of, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Mm. We all use Facebook, don't we? Tonight, like I said, Eddie Money is going to be joining us. He's got a new reality television show. Here's the trailer for his new show called Real Money on Axis TV. I'm Eddie Money. Your mother's a big fan of mine. Access TV presents... Hey guys, we gotta go to work! A new original series. Dad's gonna freak out. What did you do? I'm going completely out of my mind. You son of a... Follow the life of superstar Eddie oh, Money. I got a show of yours. You should be filming this. Real Money. And I made my bones back in the mid-70s. You know, I was out to just be successful and sell a lot of records and have as much fun as I possibly could be on everybody's back, you know. <laughs> that was then. This is now. Yes. Julian! Hey! Where's Jess? She better be there. Where is everybody? I got a wife and five kids, and believe it or not, three of my kids are in the band. I'm having a hard time. Let's go! We're kind of like the Partridge family. Only dysfunctional. What have you been drinking? Wild turkey? I'm raising Janice Joplin here. Bang, zoom, off to the moon. You always said that you wanted to have your kids be in your bands. Why didn't you punch me in the face? But at the end of the day, it's all about family. Real Money premieres Sunday, April 8th at 9 30, 8 30 Central. Set your DVR now on Real Money premieres this Sunday. Yep. Um, Susan Stromsky says, making lasagna, sun is out tonight, isn't quite here yet. Just saying. Yes, we know. 
This is the night show live. Move from our old time from 8 p.m. to our new time, 5 p.m. Every day, weekdays that is, we do take weekends off. Every weekday at 5 uh, on the 99.1 PLR Facebook page. And uh, Jim. Yeah. I have a question for you. Go. You haven't been doing your hair before the shows. No? No, what's up with that? Does it look good? It looks fantastic. I forgot to mention it when we talked. Oh, previously. you mean I haven't been running in there and No, I know. You 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 have product and you have combs and yeah. and and uh this new time is messing with your hair regimen, isn't it? Yeah. Cuz usually I go in there at 7, do the hair, shows at 8. Now I I got to fit that I got to figure out how to fit that fit that in mm-hmm. around here, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people walking around. I don't like when anybody's in the bathroom while I'm doing my hair. Really? Yep. If I start doing the hair and somebody walks in the door, I walk right out. I have weird really? ways of doing things. Yeah. Is that because you know it's a little bit ladylike to care so much about your hair? <laughs> Maybe you should be using the woman's room to do your hair. <laughs> they probably have nice mirrors in there with all the lights. It's exactly the same. Ah. I had to use that in an emergency one time. Uh, also, Russ McGovern said, uh, sexy Kelly, question mark. Dude. He's right here. That's okay. That's 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 Kelly's boyfriend. I'd, I'd take it as a compliment. He's right. He's right there. <laughs> Russ McGovern from the mind of Russ McGovern. <laughs> Russ McGovern needs to get laid. I think that's the problem. If he's yeah. if he's hitting on my producer's girlfriend through the internet via Russ, the internet. Russ McGovern Tinder, swipe right. It's all about numbers. So what you do is you get on Tinder. And you just keep on swiping right. Fish with dynamite. That's, That's right. it. That's right. Just get a fish with dynamite. The more the numbers, the more people that you put out there. The bigger there, net you cast, the more of a chance you're going to have. Right. It sounds like you're a, you've been. Oh, I did the Tinder thing and the Bumble thing and the, not, not Grindr. Um, what was the other one? Match. I did all those. Did you? And I met that crazy girl that liked puppets. I told you that story. No, you did not. Yeah. She had a back seat. Crazy girl fill- that liked puppets. Yes, a back seat filled with puppets. What Real do you mean, puppets. Like hand? Hand puppets, yeah. Puppets? She asked me if I wanted to meet them all. No. That's the crazy part. So I have heard of ventriloquists, um, Otto and George, who are uh, very, very dirty. And I say are as a they because that's. So if he takes out Otto from his case. He he has this sort of mental breakdown where he has to do the voice. Like he cannot oh. be in a room with his ventriloquist dummy without being on. It's kind of like that method acting for puppeteers. It is right. So was she a puppeteer, or does she just like puppets? I don't think she was a. Pu- I don't think anybody ever paid her to be a puppeteer. I think she just. You're better off with puppets. Cop Kelly. Yeah, I, know. I can see why. So Russ, there's puppeteers out there for you. Cast aside from by Jim yeah. and his amazing hair. I bet she was just maybe she wanted to make you a puppet. I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I bet that's what it was. So uh, let's see who's out there for comments. Peter, how are we doing, Pinho? Uh, Produce Bob is here. Eddie Money is the man. He's going to be coming on in just a couple minutes. Um, audio good now. Thank you. I was uh, having a little. Nothing good comes from Tinder guys, says Kellyanne. Was Kelly a, a Tinder person? Um, I think she gave it a shot. Hmm. It's way worse for women, though, those dating apps. No, it's not. Why? They literally have the pick of the... Like, dude, guys are always the one that are like, hey, how's it going? And a, a woman literally just needs to sit back and receive <laughs> the incoming... Women never have to swipe right if they don't want to. Well, and Bumble, if a they have to message you first. The women have to message the women the have guys. to message the guy. I'm not like a pro. Which is why Bumble I was, was on, better. The last thing I was on was Plenty of Fish. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I ever did that. No, I did do that. Did you? Yeah. How did that go? Um, I, I met another crazy one. Perfect. Yeah. She liked puppets? No, <laughs> she liked horses. Horses? Yeah. Oh, uh, I owned a horse. Well... My girlfriend owned a horse, and I uh, helped her with the horse. <laughs> Nothing like shoveling shit at 6 o'clock in the morning 
January 15th or whatever. Frozen shit. Frozen shit. Ugh, it's the worst. So we're going to get to our uh, interview with uh, Eddie Money. Thanks for coming out to the Night Show Live. Our new time, 5 o'clock every weekday, only on the 99.1 PLR Facebook page. Thank you to everyone that joined us and all of our aristocratic fans. We really appreciate you following us through the, uh, the, um, the time change. It's been quite an interesting uh, journey, but we're doing our best, and we're going to keep it going. So uh, here is Eddie Money and um, his new show, Real Money. And on the phone at this very moment, the one and only Mr. Eddie Money. How we doing? Doing great. Got a lot of great fans back there in Connecticut, Hoffman, that old section of the country. Yes. I've had so much fun there in the past, I could have... I could get arrested just trying to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, PLR is no stranger to uh, Eddie Money, that's for sure. Um, well, we've done a couple of interviews before. We, hey, weren't we in different rehabs together? That's what I thought, huh? How's hey. everything going, Mike? All right? <laughs> <laughs> everything is fine. Yeah, uh, so uh, Mike Lapitino, the afternoon guy, was going to uh, be here for this interview, but he couldn't make it, but he did tell me to say hello. He's a big fan. Oh, but yeah. Mike and I go way back. He's really good people. He did me a, we did a lot. We got in a lot of trouble together when we were younger. But that's what somebody else was paying for everything. We don't have that in our <laughs> you know? So, uh. Our life, was one, our life was one big credit card and it was never ours. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> so you seem like, uh, over the last, well, since you got married, you got married in 89, right? 87, I think. 87? I bought my wife 31 years. Uh, 31 years. I mean, we got married when the kids started. Parochial school, and we had two different last names. You know, we got married down in Mexico, I, and then we broke up. I didn't think it was going to hold. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from the partying rock style, the rock star lifestyle, to having seven kids. Is that right? No, no five, we got no, five, five kids. kids. Five I mean, kids. We only, five we kids, only got seven I mean, dogs. Five, 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 that's, a, yeah. that's a lot of kids, though. Yeah, seven, seven dogs, too, right? <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of dogs. It's it's a pretty crazy house, but. Uh, you know, I'll do what I can for the kids. They, you know, they got a rock band out. They don't even put CD plays in cars anymore. You got to think about when they say the video killed the radio star. Well, the internet has really killed the recording artists. Think about how many records that, you know, like Imagine Dragons could make or uh, Taylor Swift if people weren't downloading music for nothing. I got the song Brand New Day. I don't, I don't even have a record label out, and I've got, got, got 5,000 people that have the song already. We're going to be I mean, playing. now they got it. We're going to be playing Brand New Day um, a little bit later. And you also have a reality TV show coming out on uh, Access Television, right? Yeah, I don't know how many people get Access, but if you go to Access TV, A-X-S TV, and give me a zip code, they'll tell you what, what show it's going to be on. This show it's called, uh, it's called Real Money. And I, then I did that big interview with Dan Rathis, which was kind of weird. But, I mean, seeing myself on TV, guys... It would have looked a lot better ten years ago and ten pounds ago. Why? You know, all of a sudden, I got this. All of a sudden, I got this double chin, and I'm bitching about the kids. <laughs> but I mean, people think they, 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 they like the TV show a lot more. But my wife looks good, the kids look good. But to me, I don't know. I mean, I you know, I'm too old for television. Why was uh, the Dan Rather interview weird? It wasn't weird because you know, when I looked at Dan Rather, I can remember he was a really big reporter. Remember, he worked. For the uh, for the Dallas News, when President Kennedy got killed in 1963, he was the first reporter to find out that the president was dead, and he told Walter Cronkite, and Walter Cronkite told the world. Yes, Dan I didn't was, know that. Kid, yeah, when I when I was a kid, he was on. He was doing all the uh, Vietnam stuff and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, the guy's a real legend, and I thought the TV show was good. He was a complete gentleman, and. Uh, I thought maybe I told a couple of stupid jokes that my wife hated, but it was okay. You know, <laughs> I thought it was good. So your kids play in the band with you. They have a rock band of their own, and your kids also play. I saw a, a clip of them playing Two Tickets to Paradise with you. That's got to be kind of a trip, right? It really is. I mean, the kids are they're good. Uh, they got their own careers going on. I mean, 
I had a big fight with the, one of my kids the other night because I wanted him to do one of my songs instead of one of his songs. And all of a sudden, I thought I was talking to Eddie Money. I said, well, hey, you know, where would you guys be without? But to make a long story short, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Work, it's fun working with the kids, but on the other hand, it's a lot more fun working with my real band. I mean, I still do a lot of shows with my real band. But working with the kids, you got to figure the audience really loves the kids. Julian's a great drummer. My daughter Jessica's very animated, and, and Desmond's a good guitar player, and he's got his own songs. But, you know, I can't turn around and do, like, Give Me Some Water. I can't do Life for the Taken or Call On Me or all these Any Money songs that my regular band knows. You know, because the, my kids, they, they don't want to learn that many of my songs. Like, you know, <laughs> well, isn't that every, time I, I, every time I yell at the kids, my wife says to me, stop picking on the kids. What are you, Joe Jackson? Isn't I'm the, going, leave me alone. It's like crazy. <laughs> isn't, isn't being a, in a band with Eddie Money part of the job is learning the songs, right? Like, that's what you're, that's what they're supposed, that's what they're getting paid to do. Exactly. Learn the songs. You know, it, it's really, it's really crazy. Some of my kids are learning the songs really good, but, I mean, the TV show was crazy because, you know, I brought my daughter, she was straight for 10 minutes and I bought her this cheap Cherokee and she turned around, put it in reverse and smashed into a wall and they didn't tell me about it. Perfect. And they were shooting the show when I came home and I'm looking at my daughter's car smashed in the driveway. And I, I hate to sound cheap, but when I spend that kind of money on something, it's like it's like it's my car. Right. It might be my little girl driving the son of a bitch <laughs> thing, but it's my car. Those new Cherokees same. are expensive too. Yeah, you had a great. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I I'm not Billy Joel for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say. I, I, you you made that comment in the uh, the trailer of your of your uh, the new show, Real Money. And uh, that's one thing he said. Right. He's like, I'm not Billy Joel. <laughs> Were you arguing with the same kid? The, the girl? That... I, you know, I'll tell you, the kids drive me crazy. My, my, old, my youngest son, who plays drums, I mean, he plays drums in my kid's band, but you try to get him to play Give Me Some Water, or he's got the kick in the wrong place, so I want to be a rock and roll star, because he doesn't give a rat's ass about his father. It might be good TV, but i got to live with these little sons of guns. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but you I have... Mean, I, I think about 20 years ago, I said to myself, I should have got that TV fix. Because I got all these kids, and they're all, they're all, they got their cars in the driveway. Sometimes who's taking out the garbage? Who's emptying the dishwasher? Well, can I get a little help around here? I mean, you know, I'm living with these five adult children, and I'm ready to kill all of them. I'm sorry. But they're all, sorry, they're all musicians. I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. It's a classic rock I station. Start, you could say I'm that. I'm sorry for that thing. This is... It's one of the last interviews, and I'm starting to lose my cool here. I mean, the kids, I love the, I love the kids. I love the kids. Are my, they're my kids, but you know what? They're real, a real pain in the ass. Well, I mean, they really are. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, well, I go out on the road. I never what room Jessica's in. Why is it Julie in the car? We're going to miss the plane. Where's this guy? Where's that guy? You know, who's got the... It's like, you no, know, I go out with the van. Nobody's late getting in the car. We're all this sound check. Everybody's on an even keel. You out with the kids. You don't know what the, what's happening. You know, it's like they're crazy. And you also all of a sudden, a... I'm, going to sound, I'm, I'm going to sound check, and all of a sudden, I've got a $52 bar, bar bill, and it's not even my band. It's the kids with the friends. <laughs> oh, man. You uh, know? You, you're, you're also on tour, and the closest you come to us is uh, someplace in, in New York State. I saw you doing a lot of Colorado dates. A lot of California dates, but uh, is there anything planned for out in the Connecticut way? I tell you the truth, we do do uh, we do the Mohican Sun, which is a bit the big show for me. I do that every year, and I mean, I used to love playing Toads, and uh, I mean, I've got a lot, I played like you know the New Haven State Fair. I mean, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of great shows back there, and I, I've really got a lot of really good friends back there in New Haven, and. And that neck of the woods that I still talk to all the time. I mean, I, I mean that's my neck of the woods. I was always trying to get out of New York and Connecticut was boring. I'd always head out to where you guys were at. I've always had a good time there, you know? Right. And you're from Long, I Long Island, right? Not from Long Island, but, you know, we're just taking out. But what are you going to do? I mean, I grew up in New York, and I had a really good report card. My father found out that I wasn't going to school. So all of a sudden, I lived in, I went to John Gotti's high school. No way. I was wow. Wow. I went to, I was, you know, I just wasn't, I was having too much fun in Brooklyn. So we moved out to Long Island. I went to school out there. Who the hell knows? I graduated. You know you're a big deal 
in the mafia when Eddie Money's like, yeah, I went to John Gotti's high school. Oh, yeah. You know, John Gotti's like, yeah, I went to Eddie Money's <laughs> high school. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, listen, I grew up with a lot of Jewish kids, a lot of Italian kids, a lot of Polish kids. I'm, come on, I grew up in New York. I mean, come on. Yeah, right. Everybody's from, everybody's from, everybody's parents is from somewhere else. You know that as well as I do. Oh, man. Oh, there's, sure. And there's no better Jewish delis than in Long Island and, uh, and uh, the city, right? Oh, you know, I just love a good potato knish, no matter where you can get it. I live in California right now, and I go to this Jewish deli down the street. I get some, like, liver and onions. I get a good chocolate egg cream and a potato knish. But you got to know where to go. I mean, I love to eat. I mean, I love my wife. I told my wife I love to. She said, get off me. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss the East Coast at all, living out here? Yeah, I do. But I'm back there so much. It's ridiculous. I just spent like three, I spent like a month and a half doing my Broadway show, which is called Two Tickets to Paradise. I did up in Rochester. I spent a lot of time in Long Island. And uh, I, I spent like maybe a week and a half with my Aunt Mickey in New Haven. So, uh, yeah, I've been back there for the last six months. I've been back there. And let me tell you, man, I was oh. listening to um, your new single, Brand New Day. Very, yeah. very good, man. I Excellent. Like, it, uh you you have not lost a step at all. I appreciate that, guys, but you know how stupid I can be. I, I, I'm doing all these interviews for Access TV. Mark Cuban loves me. Everybody loves the TV show. And the record's not out. I was so busy putting the play on in, in, in uh, New York that, it, that I never got around to, to signing the record deal. So everybody said they love me brand new day. Well, they can't even buy Brand New Day anywhere. I mean, the record's going to be out in about three or four months. I mean, I, I just screwed up. My timing was off. I don't know what happened. How many episodes uh, did you shoot of Real Money? They shot about 10 or 12 episodes, and it was really nuts. You know, it's like, you know, I'm glad it's over because they, you know, they had me on a go-kart thing, and all my my kids were trying to cut me off on the go-kart <laughs> Thing, and then we did the thing with the golf thing, and you know, and every time I put a mic on my wife, she was such a little wise if I couldn't stand her. You know, <laughs> you know this is a good uh, a reminder to always get the interviews in the beginning of the day. Yes, <laughs> you know. Although maybe we you know, should stick really, with it at the end because the truth comes out, right? Yeah. You know, I tell you, there's some really crazy stuff that that they shot and. Uh, you know, did, did a couple of episodes without me, which was great. And, and then I did the interview with Dan Rather, and he said to me, what's the TV show really like? I said, well, my wife calls me a fat husband when she's mad at me. So just figure a fat, fat, a fat husband bitching and moaning about his dysfunctional children. Oh, man. That's, so what it, the show's, that's what the show's all about. So and it doesn't matter people. if you're a rock star. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a rock star. It's all the same shit, no matter where you go, right? I'm just saying, it doesn't make any difference. I have friends of mine that work in bars. They do a lot of weddings and bed mitzvahs. I still hang around with the same guys that I play golf with. We go to the same guitar store and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, a buddy of mine, he's my dentist, and he's also a guitar player. He said his, his wife was having a birthday party, and my wife is so pissed off because I'm going to play this guy's birthday party. But you know what? Add, add two root canals up and to, to get doing two songs at a birthday party. I'm on the winning end. Right. I'm on the winning end. Yeah, back to when barter is, is fine. You can do that. No one wants anything I, mean, I have. I, you, know, <laughs> he's great, you know, he's a good buddy of mine, and he does my and he, and he works on my teeth for me for nothing. He does the kids for nothing. And, you know, me, I, my friend wants me to play his wife's wedding. You know, the guy does me a favor. I'm going to do him a favor. That's what friends are for, right? Right. Absolutely. Right. So were you recording this single while you were filming Real Money? Uh, we were doing the, yeah, about the same time I was recording the single. It's very true, because I've got a one segment in there of me singing the single. See, what I really want to do, guys, is make a video of me singing the single. Like me just walking along, maybe playing golf, me along, like feeding the ducks, or, you know, or riding my bike, or, or sitting in the kitchen with my wife, doing a verse here and a verse there, and putting it all together, and giving it to Act 6 TV. So when the record comes out, I've already got a hit single. Right. Was your last album in, I uh, think, if I remember correctly, 2007? I don't even remember. You know, guys, I, you know, I made records that were really good records, and then I made records that you couldn't sell me as a hostage. I don't really know. <laughs> but I know one thing. I got friends out there that got the Right Here album and this and that. I was having a big fight with my, you know, I was drinking a lot. I had a big fight with my, uh, the president of Columbia Records at the time. He was a complete 
jerk off. And I mean, I mean, you know me. I just can't take any shit. I, I, it's, it's hard for me, you know. But then again, I've been I've been ups and downs. Now I'm now I got a couple of really big labels that want to re-sign me. It's kind of like I was kind of like the, the the girl that everybody did in high school, and all of a sudden they want to get a piece of ass again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you you got that uh, that Long Island attitude for sure, man. You know. You know, you do, you know, people say to me, when are you going to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I tell everybody, when I'm in an urn on my wife's fireplace. Don't even ask me about things like that. Why is it Ario Speedwagon in Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Or Peter Frampton or, or Styx or, or Leonard Skinner. I mean, there's so many of my friends that aren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Forget about me. Put them in and they'll vote for me and I'll get in. Thank you very much. All right, much. guys, listen. Have a great day. That's for a good interview. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah, a lot, man. man. Thank you, Eddie Money. Here's I... Eddie Money's brand new song, Brand New Day. All the hearts I had to break. Eddie Money. Thank you, Mr. Money. He's fun to talk to. He is a fun... It's like talking to your uncle. You know like, what? He's a New Yorker, too. That's it. You know, he's he's not... Uh, 
He's very, very comfortable to talk to yeah. because, I mean, he's one of us. I mean, we're New Englanders, but New York, New England, you know, yeah. Boston's one attitude, New York's one attitude, and, and we're all of them yeah. in the middle. But just the way, the way he interacts, it's like, you know, talking to him over pasta dinner. Yeah, yeah. I would, love, I would love to have a pasta dinner. Yeah. Oh, those with, sons of guns. Eh. With, with any money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming out to the night show live. Our guest this evening, the amazing... Eddie Money, make sure you check out his new reality show, Real Money, coming, uh, premiering this Sunday on Axis TV at 9.30. Also, uh, be looking out for Brand New Day, his new unreleased single. And you heard it here first on 99.1 PLR Facebook page on The Night Show Live with Ryan Roberts. With me, as always, my illustrious producer, Jim Lauber III. Thank you for producing the shit out of that show, Jim. He was hard to get a hold of. Yes, we had a we had a couple moments yeah. where we didn't think it was going to happen, but it happened because Jim produced the shit out of it. Thanks for coming out to the night show. Tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, trying to arrange guests as we speak because uh, things have been all rearranged. Don't forget the new time, five p.m. Thank you to uh, all the aristocrats that made the switch, and we'll see everyone back here tomorrow.